Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a Dell laptop. This is the Dell Inspiron 15 3000 series model. The exact model for this one is a 3511 within that 3000 model. That information can be found in the BIOS on the bottom stick of the laptop. And in this video I'm going to take you on a step by step how you can open it up and how you can replace or remove or upgrade your storage on your laptop. Then it doesn't matter if you have an NVMe M.2, if you want to add an additional one and what are the limits that you can do in here. Just remember that once you replace the main storage or higher capacity or anything else, you have to reinstall the Windows freshly installed. I've made a video how to create your Windows 11 USB boot drive. Follow that link, it's free and it's original from official site. And you can follow any of my YouTube video that I made on how to properly install Windows 11 without getting those bloatware or uh, affiliated programs on your laptop. Follow any of the steps of the Windows installation, doesn't have to matter what brand. Just remember once you create the Windows USB boot drive, you plug it in here. Once you replace the main storage, you boot power on, it will boot up through the USB and it will take you through the steps of the installation. But if not, just plug in the USB. When you power on, you start tapping on F12, then it's gonna give you to choose where you wanna boot from, and then you choose your USB. And that's it. All right, in this video, I'm gonna open it up and show you the combinations and the limits. All right, first thing first, back up your files if you want to, and power off the laptop completely. And we're gonna flip it upside down. And the client said that they have replaced one screw, I can see it's like a kind of little bit. And he said they put a, on this side, I believe, epoxy and Super glue, so we're not gonna change. But for you guys, uh, all the screws are the same size and height, so don't worry about mix matching them. We're not gonna remove two screws. One screw on the back corner left, and one screw on the back corner right. Right and left, we're not gonna touch these ones, and we're gonna leave them at the end, and I'll explain why. So first thing first, we're gonna remove the back mid, one on each side, and three right in the front. I'll be using an iFix screwdriver set. And everything that I'll use, compatible storage and recommended one will be linked in the video description in case you wanna purchase yours. We're gonna use a Phillips number one. And uh, for the opening tool, I'll be using a guitar pick. And metallic guitar picks are suitable to opening cases and covers. All right, so let's go ahead and starting from back mid on the top and on the rest, we remove everything. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I will greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in my commentary. I appreciate that. I remove all the screws that I could, except the one in here because this one is glued down, but you have to remove yours. Now, regarding the screws in the corner, these screws, they have something called a C-lock. The C-lock will prevent the screw coming out entirely, so you just have to rotate, and it serves a purpose, is to separate the covers from each other. So as soon as I start rotating it, which you should do, you're gonna see a gap opening, that gap. And you're gonna keep rotating until you hear like a few clicks, don't do any more, otherwise you're gonna be there forever. Do the same thing in here on the other side and stop right when you hear the clicks. Now you wanna grab the opening tool, in this case the guitar pick, and stick it between bottom cover and the palm rest. And then one or two millimeters, and then just twist it like that, do one every, couple of centimeters or every one centimeter all around in the front go you want to hear those click sound of the plastic the clips are getting loosened up don't worry you're not breaking anything make sure you remove the screw not like me that i didn't remove it because it has a super glue once you do the sides and the front all you want to do grab it from the corners and bring it up and wiggle it around and it will release itself and there we have it and right away here we can see we have two options. 2.5 inch storage drive we can have in here. And there's a mechanical drive in here. You can put on up to four terabyte or two terabyte solid state drive or Kingston or whichever brand. I would recommend the Samsung Evo 2.5 inch. You can put it in here. And there's a space for M.2 uh, NVMe Gen 3. So you can put a Gen 3 in here. So let's start with one by one. Again, to upgrade this, you do not need to disconnect the battery. Do not disconnect the battery, you don't need it. Unless you feel like I'm gonna drop a screwdriver over the board or metallic and stuff like that, then you should go ahead and disconnect it. To disconnect it, you wanna pull this jack backward just like this. Put it back in, straight, push it in, straight in. Some people push it in sideways and create a spark and then game over for the motherboard. All right, 
So first, we're gonna remove the me mechanical drive. To remove it, you wanna lift up this trigger right in here, 90 degree upward, and then you wanna pull the cable back in 45 degree angle. Now you wanna remove four screws on the caddy. The caddy is the bracket that holds the hard drive in place. There are four of them. The screws are the same size. Once you remove the bracket, the caddy, you want to grab your do that Toshiba, one terabyte. You can put up to two terabyte mechanical drive, low profile. Do not go with a higher capacity, otherwise they're going to be thick and they will not sit there. But any SSD up to four terabyte, they are low profile and they will fit fine. Uh, you want to, don't pull on the cable, pull on the jack backward. So that you need this adapter and SSD has the same connector right on it or any hard drive has the same connector. So it doesn't matter whatever you choose, they have the same connector. All you want to pay attention to is that the orientation of the connection are the same. So you don't want to put the next hard drive in the other way around or it will be inverted and the adapter will not go through. You have to rotate this and then you have to twist this cable twice, which you don't want to do that, right? So what you want to do, you want to remove this bracket, the caddy, there's a one, two screws on this side and two screws on that side. So remove these four screws, grab the metal cover, and put it right on the new drive, and screw it down. Let's say that you did that just for demonstration. Once you're done with that, grab the adapter, just goes in one way, push it in there, and align it in here, make sure the screw holes are matching, and put the four screws for the drive. If you put a solid state drive in here, the file transfer rate between the drives will be super fast and it's a little better. But if you want a higher capacity, cheaper with the mechanical drives, they are the solution. All right, once you put the screws in, grab the connector in 45 degree angle, goes inside the connector and then bring the latch down, lock it down in there. For the M.2, we need to remove this screw at the back, All right? Because they did give you an extension, I'll call this. You want to pull it back, has a little adhesive, I mean thermal pads, remove this one, and the SSD will come out in 45 degree angle. You want to pull it out in a 45 degree angle, don't yank it upward, 45 degree. They give you a short NVMe, you can get a full-size NVMe, which will be just like this. And uh, grab a Samsung 990 Pro or 990, 980 Pro up to two terabyte. You can put a four terabyte, but they will be overheating it, but there's no space for cooling system or for a heat sink for this one. So go up to two terabyte NVMe with no issue. If you're on a good brand, 990 or 980 Samsung Pro, those are recommended. All on the NVMe, there's only one notch on them and there's a one notch cut right on the dim. You wanna bring the drive in 45 degree inside the connector, push it in there and bring it down and the screw hole will match. And all you need to do is to put the screw right over. Now, if you put a full size SSD, you don't need this extra uh, thing to put over, so it's not absolutely required. Because yours might have a little capacitor and can touch the corners and can shorten up, just don't put it. Keep it in a different pile and keep it. Now, if you purchase, now you want to use this on an external or you want to use the mechanical drive that you have as an external storage, you can do that. For the mechanical drives, you can buy yourself a hard drive caddy that you can just stamp in your mechanical drive or solid state drive in here. And with a USB-C, use it as an external drive. If you want to use your M.2 as an external drive, you can do it by purchasing yourself an enclosure for M.2. Just plug in your M.2 in the enclosure, put the screws, and shove it in the caddy that it comes in, and then you have the same uh, USB 3 or 3.1, depending on what you purchase. I'll leave the link for these enclosures in case you want to purchase yours. All right. So remove it again. Remove one screw on the top, pull it back, put the new drive in, in 45, bring this caddy in, push it down, and then slide it in there, make sure the screw hole matches, and put the screw right over, all right? Once you're done, make sure you plug in the battery if you have disconnected it. Then just remember when you disconnect the battery, it might take up to one minute for it to 
showing up anything on the screen. I'm going to power on and I'll plug in my USB boot drive so you guys can see that it does boot up with no problem. All right. The USB that I have for boot up is a little bit different than what you guys are going to be using. So, so first let's go power it on. Don't forget to put the rest of the screws on the bottom cover. So I'm going to power it on. There we go, the light is turning on, but nothing on the screen yet. So what you want to do, put the USB, I don't have mine right now actually. You're going to start tapping on F12 once you see the logo. So I'm going to wait. Still, the light is going to turn off probably. As soon as I see a logo, I'm going to start tapping F12. Just going to get my hand ready. There. I'm going to tap F12. Oh, it is shut down. Doesn't matter if it, it might do it. Power on, power off. So don't worry about it. Because that's the reason that I say don't disconnect the battery. It's just going to reboot the BIOS. It's not a big deal, but just uh, some people get panic attack. So there we go. I keep tapping, spamming F12. And it will take you to a a boot drive. If you have your USB plugged in, you're going to go with an arrow up and down and choose your USB boot drive and it's going to boot up to the Windows installation. Again, I hope you guys like this video and help you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.